Hey yo, what's good everyone? It's ba 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 Taran and welcome to the It's Real podcast. This is episode 5 and today I'm going to be talking about some stories uh, during my working life ever since I graduated back in 2018. So I'm just going to tell you what I studied. So for those of you that don't know, I probably mentioned this in my live streams but I'm, I'm sure I've made like a few of them private anyways. Uh, so yeah, I did medical biochemistry uh, from 2015 to 2018. I was supposed to do a sandwich course, which is basically like a one-year placement, but I just switched from four years to three years because the uni didn't really help with that. So I just thought, you know what, I might as well just get the degree out of the way and just find work after. So yeah, my first job after graduating back in 2018 was in a petrol station, all right? So... What I did there was just basically customer service assistant. And the only reason why I got that job was because I'm Tamil, bro. Like, everybody working there was literally Tamil, okay? Like, if you go to a petrol station, chicken shop in London or any shop, like convenience store or whatever, you know, the local freaking Labara Mobile, Leica Mobile, whatever you want to call it, it's always full of Tamils, bro. <laughs> and that's literally the only reason. They saw my surname and they were like, yep, you're in. They didn't even give me an interview or nothing, bro. There's, it was just a casual chat. Like, you know, um, these are the hours you're going to do and uh, this is what you're going to expect. And he just wanted to know a bit about me, but not like profession in a professional way, just like in a casual way, which is kind of weird, you know, like I've never had that before. But yeah, so during my time at petrol, so I worked in two different petrol stations, okay, so... The first one, I did night shifts, and it was the worst time to do night shifts because at the time, we were basically building a loft extension for my room and my brother's room, and I can only sleep during the day in it. So when I was sleeping during the day, they would just be drilling the freaking walls and hammering and shit, and I couldn't sleep at all. So I only lasted uh, there for about like two months, I'd say. But I had some interesting experiences like here okay let me tell you one of them so basically there was this girl right and you can tell she was a bit either a bit drunk or a bit tipsy i don't know so she came in it was like just about uh like maybe midnight maybe just be before midnight i don't know i think it was a friday or saturday night okay and she came in and she just gave me a bottle of uh I thought it was apple juice, okay? You already know where this is going, right? <laughs> she said, oh, do you have a bin? Even though we have bins in the forecourt and we have a freaking toilet. Okay. She gave me a bottle of piss, basically, okay? It was closed and everything, but at the time, I thought it was apple juice and she said, could you just put this in the bin for me, please? And because we have a bin behind the till, right? So she, so I was like, yeah, I mean, I was so tired. I couldn't even be asked to disagree with her or like tell her to throw it away. Cause I just thought it was apple juice. I just, I didn't want to say, okay, there's a bin over there. Why don't you go there? And I didn't want to make a walk or anything. I just felt a bit tired. And I, I mean, if I was in the mood, I would actually be a bit pissed off with her by giving me a bottle of freaking piss. That's what it was, by the way, because as soon as I took it off her, it felt a bit warm. And I ob obviously knew what it was. We literally have a freaking toilet, okay? I don't know why she did that. Okay, so that was one experience we had. Another experience I had at that petrol station was... Um, so, because... Okay, this was a different petrol station I worked in. So, this time I was doing day shifts, okay? But we... Even during the day, we also had some weird people. So, I mean, it wasn't... He had a valid excuse for why he got pissed off. But I'll tell you anyways what happened. So I was at the till and uh, it was getting quite busy. And the person working with me was your typical Tamil auntie. Okay, she's a Sri Lankan auntie. And she was literally talking on the phone in Tamil uh, while serving customers. And this black guy, he found it quite rude. I mean, uh, I got no... Um, I'm not... I'm not saying anything, there's anything wrong with black people, by the way. I'm just saying he was a black guy, okay? Yeah, okay. So he basically found that rude because she wasn't really quite friendly and she wasn't, you know, approaching customers in a friendly way because she was just speaking to me and someone on the phone in Tamil. So he probably, because they don't understand what they're, what they're saying, obviously they're going to find that rude because they could be saying anything about them. You know, they could be like cussing them or whatever. So then he went on a freaking rant, bro. Like, he, he was fine with me. He was okay with me. 
but he was like having an argument with her so he started saying um saying you know he's got men like you don't know who i am around here like he was like he's trying to big himself up in it like everyone around that area knew him and he was like uh trust me you don't know me you don't know what i can do you know like uh you're a bit rude so like, he was just saying like you're rude you're this that all of that and then he said to me he was like now you're okay you you carry on i mean I, I ain't got no problems with you but then he was like going on and on to her about why she's not speaking in english but the fact is she can't she can speak in english but she's not very fluent she's like she's quite bad she's she knows probably the basics and even then she has to kind of like mix it with tumble in a way that's how like bad she was i don't even know how she got the job in the first place to be honest but um yeah that's how it got so that was another experience i had all right so after working at a petrol station i moved into a food testing lab okay so in the food testing lab i met a lot of people around my age so it was a really like nice environment the only problem was um we had to do a lot of manual work like pushing trolleys and stuff like that and it wasn't actually lab work which is what i wanted like something more scientific it was more like factory kind of work if if you know what that means um so yeah we were basically preparing like food samples with bacteria and then putting them on like petri dishes and stuff so that they can be tested in the microbiology lab for like pathogens and whatever like bacterial growth basically which we didn't do we only did the manufacturing side of things yeah i would say yeah manufacturing side of things all right so cool we had a christmas party okay so we went to this german pub uh what's it called oktoberfest or something like that so we went there so this was a while ago and i was very new to i was a very lightweight when it came to alcohol okay i only started drinking at like 19 i think yeah and my first ever drink i had was wine and this was at a society event at uni but even at that time right this was just after graduating from uni i worked in this food testing lab i was quite a lightweight okay so in this christmas party i had my first ever blackout okay my first ever blackout it was crazy because i don't remember any of this okay but this is just from what people have told me so apparently i was so wild i got onto the dance floor and started dancing and even when they <laughs> they stopped the music i was still dancing like i was that fucked up so someone had to literally drag me out like just literally pull my arm and drag me and then give me like coffee shots bro just to wake me up man that was the first ever blackout and i and i'm glad i don't remember any of it because the next day i actually had to go to work and everybody was looking at me and giving me weird looks i only lasted that job i only lasted in that job for about six months yeah i only lasted six months in that job so yeah but yeah that was my first ever blackout and i'm glad i don't remember any of it because i i mean there were some other things that i did apparently but i i'm just glad i don't remember any of that okay so cool uh <laughs> but at the moment i'm like in the middle i'm between a lightweight and a heavyweight i wouldn't say i'm a heavyweight i'm just like in the middle because i took a break now i don't i don't drink anymore to be honest i i feel like you can have you can enjoy your time without the need of alcohol i feel like alcohol is just one of those easy dopamine hitters you know what i'm saying and it's only good if you're feeling a bit low or depressed or whatever so i feel like i know what i need to do in life and i feel like i'm i am on the right path I, i'm currently jobless at the moment but i i do know what i want to do which is good okay uh all right so that's that uh what else we got so then i moved on to another company straight after that it was a pharma company this job was great i stayed there for like one year uh because it was a maternity cover contract i was working on behalf of someone else when, while she was on maternity cover basically yeah and um so i only lasted a year because i had to leave straight after she came back they did offer me part-time but i didn't want to stay because i just wanted to find something uh, more related to what i did because it was more like admin based duties you know like paperwork and data entry onto excel spreadsheets and all of that jargon uh but um 
this job was also quite fun because I actually got to meet a lot of people who are around my age as well and um, during lunch breaks although in my department I was literally working with like 40 year old women like two 40 year old women and my manager was like in her 60s or something okay but the 40 year old women they, they all always talk about parenting bro and I'm just sat there like uh, I'd have to listen to this again. Oh my god, I can't be asked to listen to this again. I just want to get on with my work, man. That's why during lunch breaks, I'd sit with the youngsters in the other departments. They they're in the biochemistry lab, chemistry lab, microbiology lab. So I'd sit with them during lunch breaks. But during my actual job, I'll be talking to these guys. I mean, I wouldn't even be talking to them. They would just be like blabbering on about their freaking parenting life, and I'm just sit, sat there like, I'm yeah, literally. <laughs> but um, so. This job was funny because there was one time, yeah, <laughs> one time when uh, we were, I was in the canteen talking to my uh, work coll colleagues and um, I was basically describing a dream I had to them and in that dream I was literally having a fight with my manager and punching her, like I described it as well, like I was punching her on the face and stuff trust me i got no problems with my manager i got no anger issues or nothing but that's just what happened in my dreams dreams can be random okay i don't know what dreams mean but this is what happened in my dream apparently i was having a like a one-on-one -on -one street fighter freaking fight with my manager and punching her in the face and i was basically <laughs> describing it to my work colleagues and it and little did i know they didn't want to say anything but apparently she was behind me while i was talking about this okay <laughs> and i was literally saying punching her on the face while she was on the ground and she was behind me so basically there was like some microwaves behind us because it was near a canteen but there was a table right in front of the microwave so we were sat there and she was trying to get a food in the microwave and trying to heat it up but i really hope <laughs> i don't know if she's watching this right now she she probably doesn't know if if i have this youtube channel or not but i'm i'm glad she doesn't so i really hope she never heard what I said that day, but they didn't want to say anything. They just they just gave me like signals, like like you know, like like that. You know what I'm saying? Because they didn't obviously didn't they won't didn't want to say her name because she was right there. But it was funny. <laughs> I don't know if she heard it or not. That's the problem, and I will never know. I'll never know. <laughs> That will always be a mystery. Oh, God. Yeah. And she literally walked at the time when I was describing the punching face part while she was on the floor. Oh, my God. Anyways. <laughs> oh, I still remember that. They were all, as soon as she left, everyone on the table started laughing. Everyone, bro. Yeah, it was, it was weird. Uh, okay so <laughs> that was an interesting experience so what else did i work oh okay okay covid testing okay i've got a lot of stories on this one all right so <laughs> um let's start off with uh okay let's start off with the stealing the tables okay cool okay so you know in my covid testing job right i think i told you this before i did four days on four days off and in those four days on we'd stay at hotels right but we do like 10 hour shifts and then we'd explore the places so basically we actually got to live in hotels around uk depending on where the covid outbreaks were so like one time we was in stansted we were in gatwick we were in exeter we were in telford guildford we worked in chelsea for a bit as well so i, I worked all around those places in different hotels so every time we finished our shift, we'd like try and explore the area as well, and like go to a restaurant or a pub or whatever, just explore. So one time, right, <laughs> we were on the motive to like get weird and like just do some weird things while we were drunk. So we ended up doing some weird things. By the way, I would never do these things now. Okay, that was back when I wanted to enjoy my life a little bit more you know what i'm saying like just experience stuff and do things out of my comfort zone so i did okay but now i'm just like past that stage i'm, I'm a bit more mature, mature now but so it was me and two other guys right we went for drinks and um so basically we had pre pre sessions which is basically pre drinks um in the hotel and then we just went around the area and we just wanted to get weird so basically there were some bicycles uh you know those bicycles that you pay for to use 
the guy just um basically uh i can't even talk right now he basically f made it fall down like he just pushed it and it fell down and i did the same so and then we went near a restaurant that was closed all the shops were closed by the way because it was really late at night so we went near restaurants and there were some tables and chairs right in the front of the restaurant so uh they started stealing the chairs okay so we basically stole a chair each and a table two chairs and a table we stole it and just ran off nobody looked there was no cameras we just ran off and i I ran and then I just dropped my chair somewhere uh, uh, further away, okay? But what these guys did, it's a foldable table, by the way. What these guys did, yeah, they wanted some food in it. So I, I want, no, I mean, it was me. It was my idea. I actually wanted to go to McDonald's just to get one quarter pounder because I was feeling a bit peckish in it. So I went to McDonald's. They came with me and they brought the chairs and the freaking foldable table with me. So they were more drunk than I was. Clearly, they were more drunk than I was. So... They brought the foldable chair and table with me to McDonald's. The guy, <laughs> the guy, uh, one of them actually set the table up and sat down with that chair in McDonald's waiting to be served like it was a freaking restaurant. And I was there on the freaking, you know, the touch screen uh, thing where you order the food. I was there trying to find my quarter pounder. And then... I just, while I'm ordering my food, these guys just get kicked out of McDonald's. And I was just laughing my head off, mate. And then just just after, I'm glad I, I ordered it because just after I ordered it, the guy came up to me and said, are these guys with you? Uh, they shouldn't be doing that. Tell them to go put their chair, their chair and table back where it came from and all of that. And they went, they ran off and I came out. So basically I ordered my food first. Then I came out of the McDonald's and looked around and i was lost like where the hell did they go i was trying to find them but obviously they went to put the tables and chairs back where they came from but it was a really long way because when we took it we ran in it we ran quite a long distance and we didn't even know that because we were drunk in it so i was waiting there for a good like i don't know like around five to ten minutes around in the middle like about eight minutes i'd say and bro i was like oh shit they must have freaking caught and left and i'm just there like maybe they're going back to the hotel i was i was like wondering in it but yeah after that i had to like get an uber i had to be the responsible one get an uber and bring them back but man was that a <laughs> oh my god i've got two more stories but i don't know if i can fit into this because it's already 17 minutes but bro that was jokes all right <laughs> okay i'll tell you one more at least one more so there was one time, right? It's the two same guys again that I worked with. Um, we went out again. I, I think this was in a... No, it was in the same area, but in a... I mean, the same area in London, but we went to a different area of that area, if that makes any sense. Uh, so, yeah, we went somewhere else this time. And... Uh, should I say that one? That's a bit risky. Oh, okay. We'll say this one then. Okay. So we found this seven foot guy walking down the road in the middle of the night he had like a full-on beard and long hair and everything he looked like a freaking wrestler like freaking andre the giant or a great carly or something he was quite like built as well i mean he wasn't muscular but he was a bit just big just big in general okay so i was sitting down and these lot just wanted to have a fight with him like a one-on-one -on -one fight so i was like are you serious bro like are you serious but obviously it was all like a play fight it wasn't like a proper angry fight because we were actually friends with this guy we met him a night before that too but the second time we met him we wanted to have a like a playful fight with him so they did so first one of them had a fight you know what i, I think i still have the i still have the recordings of this i don't know if i should share this with you i should probably ask them first before i share this with you but i have the recordings of this because i was sat outside on the bench right on the pavement recording the fights so first one guy did it and it was jokes they just kept running in circles and just doing basically like doing boxing fights and some even i think they even threw like kicks and stuff but yeah that was jokes so i recorded him for like a good 10 minutes and then the other guy wanted to have a fight so i recorded him as well oh my god bro 
I don't know, man. <laughs> oh, my days. That job had a lot of memorable moments. A lot of memorable moments. That's why I missed that job. It's not only about the drunk stories, bro. It's the people there, too. Like, they made the job a bit more fun, you know? Like, it was a fun environment. And also, the fact that we actually got to travel and look around places in UK was even better, too. Uh, but, yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed my stories. I do have a few more stories that I didn't manage to fit in this podcast, but yeah, it is what it is. But I'm going to make another podcast, episode seven. Uh, sorry, not another podcast, another episode. And that will be based on some stories in my primary school days. And then I'll do another one about a topic that's going on right now. Like, I don't know, Elon Musk's freaking brain chip or whatever, something like that. Okay. Okay. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I catch you lot later.